energy forecast for Wednesday, May 15th. Okay, so we have a little bit of energy shifting going on here today, starting with, of course, the buildup to the first quarter moon taking place in Leo energy. The first quarter moon in any lunar cycle is an action point, a decision point, a choice point that usually comes out of a lot of pressure building, a breaking point, if you will. Now, in this Leo energy, we're heart aligned. We are acting in accordance to our higher selves, to our passions, to our desires. We are as real and raw and authentic with what it is that we need to do, with what it is that we have to pursue in order to fulfill the this new calling, this new, let's call it inspiration, this new excitement to break away from the old and actually jump into a brand new chapter. We're going to have that first quarter moon pop off early in the morning, and then we're going to see the moon actually go void, of course. And while the moon is void, we're going to have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information communication, how it is that we express ourselves shift out of Aries energy, shift into Taurus energy, and then the moon is going to shift into Virgo energy. So again, there's going to be a little bit of a rearranging going on. And let's just talk about the fact that, of course, Mercury rules over the Virgo energy that the moon will end up in. And we have to understand that the transition from the Leo energy to the Virgo energy is always a little bit, I'm going to say, low, slow, and not well received. Why is that? Well, because the Leo energy has us all hyped up, has us bold and brave and courageous. We're ready to put ourselves out there. We're ready to make a change. We're ready to take action. And then what happens? The moon moves into this Virgo energy and suddenly we have to step back and we have to reprocess, if you will, reevaluate, if you will, our plants, our strategies. We have to figure out once we kind of, you know, build in the intensity of bravery and courage to actually put ourselves out there and take a step forward, then we have to figure out, okay, we are blazing a new path here. So what needs to stay? What needs to go? What are the problematic areas? Keeping in the back of your mind that when the moon is in Virgo energy, we get illuminated to the problems because the Virgo energy is the fixer of the Zodiac. We have the ability to fix, to repair, to heal, to correct any of the issues that become a little bit more challenging, a little bit more, I'm going to say, difficult than we anticipated. But the issue is, is that we have to become aware of them. And so usually the first part of a transit when the moon is in Virgo, we're a little bit more focused on the issues, the problems, the obstacles, the challenges in order for us to be able to fix, heal, repair and correct them over the next couple of days. So definitely be mindful that there's going to be a little bit of an up and down energy, an ebb and flow, if you will, a give and take energy, a flying high and then splat back down into the earth realm in that Virgo energy where suddenly we're going to be very aware of some of the challenges and obstacles that we are going to face as we pursue this new path, this new vision, this new goal, this new dream. So with that being said, there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. We have 10 of them involving the moon. So the moon, while still in this Leo energy, first of all, is going to try and Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries energy. So this is fire on fire action. We love this. It's a pep in our step. It's a growth. It's a healing. It is building again in this new identity. We're building in our confidence. We're building in our optimism. We're finally feeling a little bit more well-equipped, well-prepared to take action, to make moves, to actually put ourselves out there and truly kind of express either to ourselves, to the universe, or to other people what it is that we now want to pursue. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring, though with Uranus, the great awakener. So just when we have this revelation that we're building in our confidence and our optimism, that we're feeling well-equipped, that we're feeling well-prepared, suddenly we don't even know what we're well-equipped and well-prepared for. There's an element of confusion coming in. There's an element of not seeing the forest past the trees. There's this element where we're kind of ready for a change, 
but we don't know how to go about making those actual changes. Again, a square is a tangent point, a conflict, in order for us to realize where it is that we're going through growing pains, especially with this new change in path in direction. The moon then interacts with Neptune in its rulership and Pisces energy in a very positive way. This essentially is just a little bit of a reminder from our higher selves, from the universe, from the cosmos, what we're doing all of this for. This is a reminder of the goal, of the vision, of the dream that, of course, we've been very much piecing together in our inner realm. We have yet to see the actual manifestation of some of these aspects in our physical realm. But again, we're building to this action point. We're building to this choice point. And yes, we might have gotten a little bit down on ourselves, a little bit confused on what that all meant for us. But this little bit of a glimpse of what it is that we're actually building towards, what we want to build, what we want to create, what we want to bring to life is going to kind of renew our soul, our spirit, our higher self, our heart space to understand that again, we just have to push through, we have to persevere. 7.49 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to get in the boxing ring square off with the sun. And of course, this is what gives us our first quarter moon. The interaction between the moon and the sun at any point is a new emotional awareness. However, the first quarter moon is a tension point, a conflict point, again, a growing pain point. The moon in this Leo energy, again, has us kind of orienting to a new path, a new direction, a new calling, if you will, where new excitement, new inspiration is definitely triggering us to move forward. However, the sun shining a bright light in Taurus energy kind of reminding us that that's great that you're building up all this momentum in your inner realm. What about the physical realm? You have to take action and make moves to either clear away the gunk, clear the space, clean the slate in order for major changes to actually be able to manifest in the physical realm. It's a very low, slow, steady pace of rearranging, restructuring, redesigning what our physical realms actually need to look like in order to bring forth this vision, this goal, this dream. So again, a square is a tension point. We're at odds within ourselves right now because again, there's a resistance, there's a hesitancy because we are still in Taurus energy to make all these changes, to initiate any anything new, but our heart space, the moon in this Leo energy is just putting us out there, pushing us through the restrictions, the limitations, the hesitancy that we're holding inside of our, especially mental plane, because that's the hardest place to actually make the changes is to wrap your head around it. And then where it is that again, our heart and our head are kind of working in alignment, but the physical realm has yet to change. So this is going to be an aha moment, an epiphany, if you will, through a struggle, through a conflict on what we actually have to do in the physical realm to align with this inspiration, this excitement, this goal, this vision, this dream in our heart space. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. He's in his rulership in this Aries energy. We're building in restlessness. We're building in passion. We're building in desire. We're building in the warrior mood and attitude that we have to have in order to actually initiate a new chapter and not let anything hold us back. Mars, again, has this magical sword that he just kind of swishes back and forth and cuts through the obstacles, the challenges, the connections, the cores that prevent us from actually moving forward. So again, this is fire on fire energy. This is going to put a pep in our step, but it's likely going to come out of frustration, agitation, and just not being happy and content with this present moment. So again, sometimes we need our backs against the wall. Sometimes we need certain struggles to put us in a situation where we're ready to break free from what once was and we're ready to start pursuing what could be. The last aspect that the moon in Leo is going to make before going void, of course, it's a tough one. We're getting into the boxing ring. We're fighting it out. We're squaring off with Jupiter. 
So Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He's in Taurus energy. And if this was a positive interaction, we would be optimistic. We would be confident. We would be seeing the greater, grander picture. We would be seeing the options and opportunities to kind of move forward. But this is not a positive interaction. Again, growing pains. We are emotionally becoming more aware of where it is that we are essentially resisting the changes that need to be made. Yes, we build in this boldness and bravery, this courage when the moon in Leo is being aspected in a positive light. When it's not being aspected in a positive light, we're afraid, we're scaredy cats, we're kind of retreating, if you will. And at this particular point in time, we're not seeing the opportunity for change. We're not seeing the opportunity for growth. We're not seeing the opportunity for expansion because again, we're a little bit down on ourselves. We're losing our confidence. We're losing our optimistic point of view. And that is 100% natural as we move into a void section. So 12.42 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's when the moon is going to get in the boxing ring, fight it out with Jupiter. One minute later, the moon is void, of course. When the moon is void, things are shaky, things are unstable, things are uncertain. This is when we start kind of, I'm going to say spiraling, if you will. Now, while the moon is void at 1.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mercury will be moving into Taurus energy. I'm going to recommend that you take a listen to the Astro Forecast that I put out for this particular event. If you've downloaded your May Zodiac Forecast, again, go ahead, take a listen so that you understand where this particular energy is going to manifest in your life. And of course, if you've downloaded the Taurus Season e-guide, you're going to want to flip to this particular section and really capture what your mind is thinking, what you're focused on, what your questions are, what conversations are on the table. This is going to be a major shift in our mental plane. So we sit in that, we sit in this shift, we sit in this instability, we sit in this ever-changing energetic landscape for a couple of hours. And while the moon is still in Leo energy, but void, we interact with Neptune again. This time, not so happy, not so peachy keen. This time, we aren't trusting our intuition. This time, we're losing our faith. We are losing our vision. We are losing our inspiration. We are sitting in a certain amount of confusion. We are overwhelmed with the options, with the opportunities that we thought we had that now suddenly we don't see, think that we have or see that we have again, because we're getting down on ourselves. This is essentially where we become hypersensitive, super overwhelmed with the world around us. And again, scaredy cat energy, we're retreating. The moon, while still void in this Leo energy, going to make an awkward interaction with that north node in Aries energy, trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us on our soul's mission, our soul's quest. And because we're not in the greatest state of mind or heart space at this particular point in time, the path forward really doesn't look as good as it did earlier in the day. It doesn't feel as, let's say, welcoming, doesn't seem as easy it actually seems like we are going to just be banging our head against a wall, trying to express ourselves, trying to get in alignment, trying to initiate this brand new path. This is where the problems start to take place. So just a couple of minutes after this particular tension, this conflict, this low self-esteem, this low confidence, the moon shifts into the Virgo energy. And this is a very interesting dynamic because, of course, when the moon shifts into Virgo energy, first of all, it is a mutable sign, which means that our minds are changing, our heart space is changing, our direction is changing. The Virgo energy being a Earth sign ruled over by Mercury, the headspace, suddenly we are all up in the headspace. We're consumed by the conflicting thoughts. We have competing let's call it ideas. There are a lot of windows open. Our inner narrative, our inner dialogue starts getting a little bit negative, Nancy. Why? Because we have to focus on the problems in order to fix them, in order to correct them, in order to heal them, in order to repair them. So there's a little bit of seriousness. There's a little bit of somberness. Everything kind of, I'm going to say, gets a little bit heavier, a little bit more weighted, a little bit more present. And then what happens, which is very interesting to me, I don't know if y'all are going to feel the same way, but 
the moon now in this Virgo energy is going to trine beautiful interaction with Mercury who just shifted into the Taurus energy and reminder Mercury rules over the Virgo energy that the moon is now in. So the moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. They're both now in an earth sign. So we are very consumed with logical, practical matters here in the physical realm. The earth energy has us present, has us heavy, has us weighted in our physical forms to take a good look at our physical circumstances, our physical environment. Now, our heart space, the moon, and Mercury, our head space, they're on the same page. They're working together. We're starting to understand where it is that we have to slow our roll down, where we have to take a good look at our current circumstances, where we have to identify the problem, the issue, and we have to give extra credit where credit is due by focusing on all the things that are going well, all the things that are working, all the things that we are sure about. There is this building up of energy, the self-esteem, this confidence that is very much needed after we dropped off that confidence and optimism cliff earlier in the day. And this is going to put us in a totally different vibration, different mood, different attitude and different demeanor when it comes to communicating our thoughts, our ideas, our feelings to the world around us. Now, 942, this is the last aspect that we're going to have here today, and it's a little bit of a tough one. The moon and Virgo energy going to make a really harsh aspect with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who was retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you would know that I actually love when Virgo energy and Pluto energy work together because, of course, Pluto does a deep dive in our psyche to really examine that egoic programming. The moon in Virgo has the ability to kind of dissect through our thoughts, through our inner dialogue, through our inner narrative, and see the connection, the correlation on how that impacts our emotions. But of course, this isn't a positive interaction. So is it going to feel good? Probably not. Is it going to illuminate for us where it is that there are some narratives, there is some programming that still needs to be analyzed and examined so that we can correct it and override it and actually improve it? Absolutely. But again, this is a growing pain. This is an intensity in our headspace. And just to be a little bit transparent here, uh, the energies because of this interaction can manifest initially as fear of losing something or someone. Uh, it can manifest as in feeling paranoid, like something bad is going to happen or um, like, you know, the ball is going to drop or we're just waiting for just to be derailed, if you will. There is a high sense of jealousy. There's a high sense of possessiveness. There's a high sense of just not feeling like you have all the information and that there's something shady going on that you just can't put your finger on. Now, again, does that feel good? No. Is it a positive realization? Absolutely not. But there's an issue here or else we wouldn't be experiencing it. It's encouraging us to dig a little bit deeper. It's encouraging us to really focus on what is rubbing us the wrong way. And again, the moon in Virgo, we need to highlight the issue. We need to focus on the problem in order for us to fix it, resolve it, grow through it over the next couple of days. So yes, there's going to be a little bit of a darkness that takes over, a little bit of a negative Nancy narrative, a little bit of, I'm going to just say fear that gets triggered, paranoia that gets triggered that when we do the deep dive, when we start dissecting is going to illuminate a certain seed in our perspective, in our psyche, in our narrative that is triggering these, I'm going to call them delusions, because realistically, we're going to find out that they don't hold as much weight, that there isn't as much merit to these underlying suspicions as we initially think that there is. So again, this is about doing the work, the shadow work, in order to dissect the heaviness, the weight, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, in order for us to override them and empower ourselves to have a better perspective.